I'd like to extend a very warm welcome to everyone who is tuning in this afternoon. My name is Eva Lavin and I'm Head of Education at LIA. I'm joined this afternoon by two guest speakers. Firstly, Brian Johnston, who has over 20 years experience in finance and is an industry recognized expert in training and coaching, and in particular, the delivery of material in relation to the QFA. So Brian, you're very welcome. Thanks, Lydia. Great to be here. Great. Um, and we're also delighted to be joined by Dean Rock. Uh, Dean is a Client Services Associate at Metis Ireland, a graduate of the Certificate in Professional Financial Advice Programme with LIA and holder of the QFA designation. Dean is also quite well known as being one of the greatest players to wear the blue jersey for Dublin senior GA football team, winning seven senior All-Irelands to date, and a prominent member of the Dublin team that made history in 20. 20 with six in a row all Ireland football titles so Dean you're very welcome and um, so I suppose over the course of this half hour Brian is going to talk to Dean about his career in finance how he feels the QFA has helped him in his role with Metis and how his strict football training regime helped him with his studies so before I hand you over to Brian I would encourage you to use the Q&A box at the bottom of the screen if you have any questions to ask as we go along we have set aside time at the end to answer any questions and I suppose any questions we don't get to will follow up with those individuals afterwards. So I hope you all enjoy this session and I'll now hand you over to Brian. Thanks a million, Eva. Dean, really fantastic to have you with us uh, here today. Uh, Dean, could I just start off maybe just to explore a little bit about your career in finance? Um, you've joined Metis Ireland, who are a financial planning lifestyle company, I think about a year ago. Uh, previously, you had a great career as an adapted physical activity coordinator. So what I'd like you to do is maybe could you share with us uh, what attracted you to a career in finance and maybe also give us a brief overview, you know, of what your role is and what you do with Metas Ireland. Yeah, yeah, look, Brian, um, I suppose I would have worked with Special Olympics athletes and, and, and people with intellectual disabilities for quite a number of years. And, and that's where my, my career was going in, in, in through my 20s and I would have always had a, a keen interest in the financial services world and, and, and the finance sector and um, would have kept a close eye on things. And it was probably when I was about 26 or 27, I started to explore different things in my career and, and, and looking towards the future and where I might get to. And I sat down with uh, Paddy Andrews, who's a colleague of mine now in Metis Ireland. And he was obviously a teammate of mine um, with Dublin Senior Football Team for a number of years. And that's when a conversation generated around uh, the financial services world and, and maybe getting on board with, with Metis Ireland and I would have sat down with Carl Widger, the managing director of Metis Ireland then a couple of uh, months after my conversation with, with Paddy Andrews and, and from there it pretty much just snowballed and uh, I jumped straight into it with, with, with limited or, or no experience really and um, I haven't looked back since but it's been a, it's been a, it's been a great first year. I joined in, in the start of 2021 um, so totally different from the sports background in terms of what I was into, but um, you know sometimes in life you have to take a couple of risks, and uh, it's certainly paid off so far. Brilliant. Well, Dean, you certainly jumped into it. Uh, I, I, we mentioned in your introduction that you're a QFA, a qualified financial advisor. Uh, you successfully completed the certificate in professional financial advice uh, with the LIA. Maybe you could have talked to us a little bit and explain to us, you know how practical the QFA uh, was for you, you know, on your sort of on, on the job training, you know, and, and also on its day to day application uh, with your role. Yeah. So like in, in terms of what we do in Metis Ireland, like we help busy high achieving people get really important stuff done by creating financial and lifestyle plans for them to live the, the life that they want to live. So some of the services that we look after in terms of pensions, investments, estate planning, uh, the Metis Life Plan, that, 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 that's the core root of what we, what we do. So in terms of the QFA and, and the areas that we covered uh, throughout that module, um, you know, it helped me massively in terms of my role as client service executive in, in, in Metis Ireland. So for me, initially, I was starting from the, from the bottom up and dealing with service providers in terms of getting business issued and, and working on paperwork with, with clients. So very much a, an admin perspective, but... When I was studying for those exams and I was in my role as a client service executive, it was helping me day in, day out 
um, for my actual role. The study was certainly complementing what I was doing in a day to day basis. And, and that was a that was a massive part for me that made, made me fe feel comfortable and, and it gave me an opportunity to grow into the role, I suppose, um, a li little bit quicker than, than I would have if I was if I wasn't undertaking the exam. Yeah, um, and I just mentioned as well, uh, Dean, for, I think for anybody thinking of studying the QFA, it really is, it is just so practical, you know, as I think as Ava said, I've been doing this for 20 years, but it really is, it is such a practical examination. Like, I mean, it covers things like loans, um, life insurance, investments, uh, pensions, and, and sort of broader financial planning. But the great thing about all six modules is they are all just so practical. And, and as you rightly said, they, 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 they'll help you in your day-to-day -day work. I think even if you left the industry forever, this is this is stuff that will actually stay for life. It is just so, so practical. Um, I also know that I think probably most uh, companies around the country, they, they also use these as their go-to manuals. You know, if somebody has a question on pensions or life, they, they also uh, use them for that. So, you know, just to echo, echo what you're saying there, Dean, and for anybody thinking of, uh, you know, embar embarking on a, on a career in, in finance or just looking maybe to do the QFA, it is really very, very, very practical. Uh, Dean, maybe then just to follow on with some sort of exam type, you know, uh, uh, questions for you after studying the QFA um could you could you maybe share with us okay how you found distance learning because all of this now is done by distance learning um how you approached ba balancing your work life your sporting life and indeed quite a busy personal life we might come back to that a little bit later on uh, at the at, at the moment yeah look the, the big thing around work balance and and, and sport balance you, you, you know, through experience and through time, you have to get into a real disciplined routine and, and, and create good habits around, you know, your work and, and making time for, for, for different things. And, and that was no different when it came to the exams. It was probably the first time I'd done exams in maybe five or six years. Um, so the, so the, the challenge of that and the, the thought of that was quite daunting. But for me, it was just once I got into my own routine in terms of watching the lectures on a, on a, on a day-to-day basis, whether it was just even putting the earphones in and listening on the train into work or sitting down for an even, putting an hour aside to, to, to look and, and view one of the chapters online, the videos I found quite beneficial and most beneficial for me, rather than just reading the, the books because you had that sort of um, experience with, with the teacher and you, you featured quite a bit in those QFAs. And uh, yeah, I suppose when, when you don't have the actual lectures to attend to, I found that obviously looking at the, the online lectures were, were far more beneficial than probably just reading the book and trying to make sense of it myself. So yeah, the big thing for me was, was, was more around just trying to develop those hours and putting, putting, this, putting the structure around, around the study and making sure that they were in your, in your diary for the week. And it, it's like everything for me, I found it quite refreshing to maybe step away from the football or step away from the work and, and put aside a couple of hours to actually study and take my mind off other things so for me it was a really enjoyable experience going back to study after five or six years away from it um, and now I've, yeah we'll probably talk about it down the line but I'm going to start getting into more more exams now uh, this year again. So you got into the habit of studying Dean and you know um, I, I think you mentioned then like you know discipline was important but then using a lot of the resources that the like you're probably sick of seeing me and maybe some of the other lecturers as well but you know th there are so many resources there available and again just to just to maybe mention to people who are perhaps looking at uh, the QFA obviously we did that there's a there's a, a textbook which is really really useful but there's also things like uh, as Dean mentioned then there's there's pre-recorded videos uh, that, that we have done for each of the modules. There's, there's also what we call a master class. So this is a day where uh, students like Dean uh, get to spend with, with lecturers like myself and uh, we go over typical questions. We, we look at some of the more difficult areas in the book as well. And it's also a great chance to, you know, for, for students like Dean and yourselves to, to, to actually to interact with us then as well. So really, really, I think um, lots of backup then as well. And then, you know, back to maybe back to Aoife and her team then as well. They also provide a fantastic backup there for students as well. And um, so anybody who's any questions, they can, they can actually pass them on to Aoife uh, then as well. Um, just to explore then maybe just, you know, for people maybe thinking of embarking on this course, Dean, um, why do you think, you know, just thoughts on people currently working in the finance industry are starting their career there? Um, 
it's really, really useful. Is, is there anything that you say to people maybe thinking of embarking on this course? Yeah, look, as I said, like, I, I mean, I, I came from a totally different industry and it was something that interested me, um, you know, for, for all my life. And even if, if people don't embark in a career afterwards, as you said, the practical nature and actually understanding the basic level stuff in terms of a financial perspective is is massive. And like for me, I, I did I did three exams in January and three in May. So, I mean, they were over in six months. Obviously, it, it took a bit of work to, to get there. But in fairness to the LIA, they obviously give you an opportunity to to pass. They're not there to try and make you fail. They, they make it as easy and practical as possible for, for the student in terms of all the resources available. So it just really is about that discipline, putting the time aside, getting the work done and you'll thank yourself for, for it in the end. And like, as I said, in my role with Metis Ireland, it's just the practical nature of the actual exams and the topics that we, that we studied and uh, that I can bring into my day-to-day -day role. That was the, that was the big thing about it. Like if I couldn't transfer those skills or what I learned into my day-to-day -day role, it wouldn't have been beneficial in any way, but I use them day in, day out. And as you say, the, the books are still on the, the desk for whenever I need to call upon them now and again. So it's, um, yeah, look, it was a, a great experience for me. And, and yeah, obviously I'd encourage anyone else to do it if they can and have the time to do it. And look, they can do it one at a time or two at a time, whatever the case may be. You don't have to do it the way I did it in terms of doing three in January and three in May. So it's, you do it at your own leisure and, and do it as best you can. Right, so, so maybe I could just probe a little bit more on that, Dean, then. Like, where did you start with the QFA? Maybe you could tell us a little bit about that. You know, was there a first module you took? Um, did you find the process in any way daunting or, or was it fairly easy to follow? Yeah, so I, I started with regulations first, I'm, I'm pretty sure. So that gave me a broad understanding of the financial services world. And um, and then I think I moved into was it investments and maybe loans or investments and pensions. I, I, I can't think of the order in which I did it. But, you know, for me, I, I probably knew I was joining Metis Ireland um, around October, November. Of 2020 so i i kind of had two or three months there put aside for those first three exams in january um and then the three exams towards the end in terms of the financial planning exams and, and pensions and, and investments or loan whatever order i did it in they were helping me when i was studying for that obviously it was helping me in my day-to-day -day work in in menace ireland so um yeah look it was, it was tough work but obviously after the six months it was well worth it when you get the initials or, the, or the, the qualification next year in. Brilliant, yeah, yeah. And, and again, just going back to the resources, Dean, uh, I think you mentioned there that, 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 the, that, that the videos were very useful. Did, did Any other resources you found useful uh, uh, from the LIA? Yeah, well, look, I, 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 I did a day where we go through all of the chapters and maybe go through a few exam tips and stuff like that. Um, I found that as a kind of like a refresher and um, it was quite, quite useful for me. And then just even just the past exam papers, just constantly going out over them and having the answers there is, is obviously massively important. And um, it just, yeah, for me, like I literally used all the resources available to me um, online and whether it was the books or make my own notes via the lecture notes, it was, it was just using everything. And I think that's with everything, even in work or in sport, you try and use all the resources that you can at your disposal to give yourself the best opportunity to be successful. Fantastic, yeah. And again, just, just maybe to explain to anybody thinking of doing the exam, um, that, that, that there, there's, there's effectively six books in it. Uh, and Dean uh, mentioned the first one being regulations. And that typically tends to be the sort of the first module that, that, that people will take. And then, of course, once you do another module, then it's possible to get a, you know, you, you, you can be recognized in the industry. So let's say Dean did a second one. I think you mentioned investments. That gives you what we call an APA then as well. And that, that's, uh, that, that allows you to operate in that particular sector. As I said, investments, or if you do loans, then you, you can get a loans APA and so forth. Um, so Dean, what I'd like to explore now is really just to explore the whole thing of your, your footballing career and study. Um, you obviously have a very successful uh, operating rhythm uh, that you've, you know, that, that you have in your football career. Maybe you can talk us through whether you're able to bring, you know, this same approach. And I think you've touched on it briefly already to, to your studies. Yeah, look, as I said, I was coming in off the back of no, no experience, no exams in a, in a number of years. So, like, I did rely heavily on the preparation I would have done from a sports perspective and trying to implement that into into my studies. So. Like, I mean, 
I would always put a huge amount of time into my recovery away from away from my sport, whether it's going to the sea or going to the pool. And so I'd be quite good from a time management perspective. And I think that was the big thing for me was was just managing my time really, really well. Um, from 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 a work perspective to a family life perspective to to a sporting pers- 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 perspective. So th- that was it for me. And it was just the discipline around that. Um, if I if I said I was going to put in two hours of study on a on a Saturday and two hours of study on a Sunday, that I that I followed through in it and just and just done it. And um, so for me, and then it was just the, the little bit of extras then I would have done was just literally on the train on the way in, just stick the earphones in and listen to the lectures. And that helped me a lot because uh, I was coming into the office then, the terminology was all the same. I was hearing the same words and, mm-hmm. and the same things in, in client meetings and, and in my day-to-day role here. So that certainly helped me. But yeah, I think it's just the big thing was just the discipline piece around us and probably... COVID helped me to a certain extent is that I couldn't really be going out to the pub or <laughs> socializing too much. So th- there was no really other option, only train, work and, and study. So that I think that helped me to a certain extent. But yeah, the big thing is just that discipline, please. And look, you don't have to spend six, seven, eight hours a day on this stuff. It's just a couple of hours each day or, or at the weekends and it all accumulates um, over over the space of a couple of weeks or a couple of months and then that just gives you the best opportunity to be successful in the exams. I think that's a really great point, uh, Dean. Uh, you know, having worked with students for many years, I think you've hit the nail on the head there with discipline. It's so, so important. And, and we all know it works so well. It works so well in sport, but it also works so well in studying, you know, actually, you know, mapping out some time I'm going to do, as you say, you don't have to do six or eight hours. I'm going to do an hour. I'm going to do two hours or whatever like that. And and, and actually sticking it to it then. Also think you mentioned another thing, taking time away from it as well. You know, and of course, the other great thing, great believer myself is exercise as well. It's so important to keeping us healthy, isn't it? And it's it's a also it's, you know, it's a fantastic approach uh, to take when studying then as well. So going to be a little bit more personal now, Dean, if that's okay with you. So to follow on, like, you know, like to get a little bit of maybe insight uh, into what drives you uh, to success. If we look at your football career, you've achieved an amazing amount. Okay. And indeed, uh, up, up, up to very, very recently, um, winning an All-Ireland is a great achievement in itself. You've won seven All-Irelands and, you know, recognized as one of the greatest free kickers, I think, uh, of, of all time as well. It'd be easy to sit back, wouldn't it? But you sort of keep on going. Maybe you could just share with us, like you know, what keeps you going, you know? Yes, yeah, look, like okay. it comes down to your your own values and traits as, as a person, really. And like for me, I'd be I'd be quite competitive and wanting to just do more each year. And I suppose each year takes on a year a year of its own, or it takes on a life of itself, really. And um, in terms of our success with Dublin football team and achieving so much success over the last number of years, it was just driven by an incredible environment and wanting to be striving to be better, you know, each and every training session, each and every year. And I think when you have that sort of environment, that culture around the place, it obviously it gives you, you know, a massive amount of of energy and and I wanted to, to improve and, and to, to get better. And I think that that's just kind of the way I've always been. In, in my day-to-day life or whether it was in my previous role or in my new role in, in, in Metis Ireland now, it's, ju- it's just that continuous and true improvement and want to be a better version of myself um, each and every year. So, um, yeah, so that's, a f- from, I suppose, from a, a football perspective, it's just that continuous improvement, looking to get better. And I think if each individual is doing that, it results in the team obviously performing a lot better y- year on year and getting better and better. And that's why we get that success. And, I think I've taken so many valuable life lessons from being involved in, in such a successful sports team. And I've just carried that into my, into my work life and, and try to transfer that into how I carry myself day in, day out. Fantastic. And of course, big game, big game coming up this weekend as well uh, for you. And maybe, and maybe somebody would like to ask you a question. That Finally, then maybe, uh, Dean, if I could just a- ask you, uh, you're working with Metis Ireland uh, for over a year now. Maybe you could just share with us, you know, um, what you hope to achieve with Metis Ireland, uh, where you see your career going there. And also, any more study plans? Yeah, look, Brian, so like when I started with with Metis Ireland in January 2021, I was 
quite clear in, in the vision and the, the roadmap that I'd set out for myself and discussed it obviously with, with Carl Widger and um, being managing director here. And um, it was always to do the QFAs in year one, uh, year two, to, to start the retirement planning advice. So two exams okay. now, one in May and one in September. Um, and then after that, then it's to, to go down the route of the CFP and, and to start and to enroll in that. So that's kind of where my career path is, 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 is going towards. So the next thing for me is those RPA exams now in May and September and trying to just broaden my, my knowledge of, of pensions and, and, and the whole industry and in terms of trying to be really technical and sharp in that aspect. And uh, just it comes back to trying to improve myself as a financial advisor and just get better uh, off the pitch. So it's something I'm looking forward to. And then obviously all going well and, and successful with, with those exams, I can move on to the CFP and, and start to, start to um, yeah, get stuck into that. Don't see you having any problem there at all, Dean. And uh, uh, again, just the RPA, such a practically, you know, such a practical course as well for pensions and pensions be really being so much, uh, being being sort of being so topical at the moment. Um, I, I'm sort of looking at the clock there, Eva, and I, 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 I know that I'm probably out of time. Uh, Dean, thanks so much for sharing that with me. Maybe hand back to you, Eva. Is there any questions there that people have for Dean? Yeah, great. And, and thanks so much to, to Dean and Brian for that. I feel like people got a lot out of that. So um, yeah, we do have a few questions coming in. So we'll use this time now to have a look at those. Um, I suppose the first question, um, and this is probably for Dean, is I suppose what part did your club and your family play in your footballing success? A massive, massive part and, and probably one of the, the, the big drivers for me personally as a, as a motivating um, aspect and, and I'm wanting to play year on year with, with, with both Ballymun Kickhams and, and Dublin. It's, it's the joy that your, your family get from it and the experiences of going to match days and, and seeing the joy that, that, that they have when we, when we win and, and when we're competing at the highest level. So yeah, they, they played a huge role. Obviously my, my dad, Barney would have played for Dublin for quite a number of years and, and was a legend in his own right and would have been uh, my idol growing up. Uh, really and I wanted to aspire to be like him and kick freeze like him so he had a massive influence and obviously some great incredible mentors in, in Ballymun Kickhams who would have coached me and um, to get me to a say to, to a position to play with Dublin so yeah play, played a massive role and um, just I suppose my family history then as well and in terms of being involved in Crow Park we got a, got awarded a president's award a couple of weeks ago and, and that, that was a massive achievement for the family it wasn't anything that I did or, or my dad did it was more the my grandfathers and great-grandfathers and grand uncles that would have done incredible work in Crow Park over the years and and so for the family it was great recognition and, and a lovely award and and yeah my family are a massive part of of, of the success and, and and will be hopefully for for the years to come. That's great, Dean. Thanks. And congratulations again on that award. It was, you know, a lovely achievement for you and your family to, to get. Um, a question here, I think, um, Brian, this might be one I know you kind of touched on it earlier, is people are wondering about recommended order to complete the QFA modules. Um, now, I know you kind of touched on this, but would you have any advice for someone just starting off? Yeah, it's 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 it, it's always a great question. Uh, I, I think, as I mentioned before, if you like, probably the glue of the QFA to get it as well is is regulations. So I usually recommend regulations and something that I suppose maybe depending on what your main interest is or if you're working in a particular area. So let's say you were working predominantly in loans. I think loans would be a good one to take with it. If you're working predominantly in life insurance, maybe the insurance one, or, or indeed the investments one, or indeed the pension one. Um, I think then, you know, Dean, Dean did brilliantly taken three at a time, but, you know, typically people might take one or two. So typically first one or two might be something like uh, regulations and loans or regulation and life. Um, and then they, they often go well together, investment and pensions maybe as well. Um, so it, I, I suppose it depends after that, uh, but certainly once you get regulations, then it's it's sort of the glue that uh, uh, goes with everything. Um, and then finally, the, the last one, just to mention as well for people, it's it's a written exam. I don't think we touched on that either. So uh, mm. the first five exams are what we call multiple choice uh, question exams. Uh, it's A, B, C or D. You choose one of those. And the final one, then financial planning is a written exam as well. 
Great. Yeah, great. That's brilliant. Dean, uh, sorry, uh, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Dean, sorry, there's another question in here for you, I suppose. People are wondering, I suppose, about your role in Metis and they're kind of querying, is, I suppose, is your day a lot at the computer or are you out meeting clients? How does that work, I suppose? Yeah, so for, for me, particularly at the beginning, it would have started off very much um, ad administration wise and, and, and really getting a, an insight into the day to day step by step processes in terms of getting business issued and uh, getting paperwork completed by clients and uh, towards the end of, of, of last year and the start of this year now it's it's meeting more clients and, and attending meetings with, with Paddy Andrews who's private client manager and and getting an insight into you know how he coordinates meetings and, and, and me introducing Paddy and the team to, 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 some, to some potential clients so yeah my, my role has probably evolved over the last year um, in terms of the basic administration work to now going and meeting clients face to face. And, and that's kind of where I see myself going to becoming a private client manager in, in, in the months and years ahead. So, um, yeah, that's great. Great. Brilliant. Thanks, Dean. And I suppose there's a there's a few questions um, just coming in as was in relation to exams and enrollments. Um, so I suppose the, the next exam sitting is May um, and enrollments are currently open for those exams. And the deadline for registrations is the 4th of March. So I think that covers off a few questions people had. Um, another question someone had is um, I have enrolled for my first QFA exam in May and I'm worried about balancing work life and study any advice I suppose Dean you've kind of been through it would you have any advice um for this person yeah for me like a big thing I focus on is the chapters that has the most waiting as well in in the book maybe try and steer the head towards toward towards those chapters um, and maybe take a little bit of pressure off you and cover more of the potential questions coming up in the exam and as I touched on earlier on, it's you don't have to do five, six hours a day or at the weekends. It's just trying to get consistent amounts of hours in in the in the lead up to the, to, to the exam, and just trying to if it, if you're free on a Friday evening, trying to get two or three hours on a Friday evening, or if it's Sunday mornings or Saturday mornings, uh, just get mass, just get real consistency around that. I think if you get that, it'll give you the best chance, and and obviously just kind of steer your head towards the the chapters with the most waiting and not to be stressing over the, the, the not so important chapters, if, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, that's great, Dean. Um, and I suppose in my time is for one more question. Um, just someone asking, I suppose, about influential people in your life, Dean, would there have been someone, I suppose, who would have been particularly in, influential in terms of your either your career or personal life? If, I, I wouldn't be able to comment on one, one, yeah. one person, but uh, like I've been lucky and very fortunate enough to be, to have met some incredible people along my sporting journey and and, 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 and career journey. So like I, I get inspired by different people at different stages in my career. And um, we certainly they've like so, so many people, endless amount of people who've, who've, who've played a massive role in my career to date. And uh, yeah, look, I, I spoke about my dad beforehand in terms of being a massive idol growing up in terms of how he carries himself as a person, uh, both on and off the pitch. So he's certainly one that I would uh, look up to and try to um, try to walk and follow his footsteps, really. Yeah, that's lovely. Thanks, Dean. So um, unfortunately, our, our time is, is really up. Um, we'll have to have you back, Dean, again. There's so many questions coming in for you. Um, but I just want, I suppose, thank um, Dean and Brian for um, being here this afternoon. Um, and thanks to everyone as well who tuned in. We hope that you enjoyed this session and, and you found it worthwhile. Um, if you would like any more information about our QFA programme, you could visit our website um, or on screen now we have the contact details of my colleague, Brian Dunphy, um, who'll be more than happy to discuss the programme with you further and answer any questions that you might have. Uh, Brian himself holds the QFA and SIA designations and is a certified financial planner. So he's, he's been through it all and come out the other side. So he's a great person to, to talk to. Um, we also have a short survey on completion of this um, session, so we'd really um, appreciate your input. It just helps assist us with the future planning um, of events. So I'd just like to thank everyone again um, for tuning in.